You're probably prompting GPT-5 the exact same way you use GPT-4, and you might even be wondering why everyone's talking about these amazing results when yours feel pretty much the same. Well, I spent my past few days testing every single technique in OpenAI's official GPT-5 guide, and I found something surprising. Your old prompting habits aren't just limiting your results. They're actually making GPT-5 perform worse than it should. In this video, I'll show you the exact prompting changes that can literally 10 times your GPT-5 results, from the hidden agentic features that most people don't even know exist, to the specific API tricks that professional developers are using right now. Welcome back to bitbias.ai where we do the research so you don't have to. By the end of this, you'll have a complete step-by-step -step system for getting professional-grade outputs, whether you're coding, writing, or building workflows. First up, let's talk about why GPT-5 thinks completely differently than GPT-4 and why that changes everything. Understanding GPT-5's revolutionary architecture. GPT-5 isn't just an upgrade, it's fundamentally different. With GPT-4, you had to micromanage every step. GPT-5 can take a high-level goal and execute it autonomously from start to finish. Here's a real example. Watch what happens when I give GPT-5 this prompt. Create a complete marketing campaign for a new fitness app targeting busy professionals. Include market research, competitor analysis, messaging strategy, and a three-month launch timeline. Instead of asking for clarification or breaking this down step-by-step -step like GPT-4 would, GPT-5 immediately starts working. It conducts market research, analyzes competitors, develops messaging frameworks, creates content calendars, and builds implementation timelines, all in one continuous workflow. The key insight? Stop breaking tasks into tiny steps. GPT-5's enhanced reasoning actually performs better with broader objectives. Give it the end goal and let it figure out the optimal path. Mastering Agentic Workflows The Game Changer GPT-5 introduces agentic scaffolding, the ability to control how autonomous you want it to be. Think of it like setting cruise control versus manual driving. For maximum autonomy, use this prompt structure. You are an agent. Keep going until the user's query is completely resolved. Never stop when you encounter uncertainty. Research and continue. Here's what happens. I ask GPT-5 to help me plan a trip to Japan. With this prompt, it automatically researched visa requirements, found flights, booked accommodations, created daily itineraries, and even suggested local restaurants, all without asking me a single follow-up question. But sometimes you want control. For quick tasks, use tool call budgets. Complete this task using maximum two tool calls. Same Japan trip prompt, but now GPT-5 gives me a basic overview and stops. Perfect when I just want quick information, not a full planning service. The key? Match the autonomy level to your task complexity. The verbosity parameter. Fine-tuning response length. Here's something that most people don't know exists, and it's going to change how you think about controlling AI outputs. GPT-5 introduces a brand new API parameter called verbosity that's separate from the reasoning effort parameter. Think about it this way. Reasoning effort controls how hard the model thinks, while verbosity controls how much it explains in its final answer. This distinction is crucial because there are times when you want deep thinking but concise output and other times when you want thorough explanations. But here's where it gets really powerful. You can override verbosity with natural language within your prompts. Watch this example. Global setting. Verbosity equals low prompt. Analyze this data and create a dashboard. Give me brief updates as you work, but provide detailed explanations for any code you write. Result. GPT-5 gives short status updates like processing data, but then explains every function, variable, and logic decision in the code itself. The practical implications here are huge. You can have an AI agent that gives you brief status updates as it works, but then provides comprehensive explanations when it delivers final results. It's like having an assistant who knows when to be quiet and when to explain everything. But there's a critical mistake that can completely sabotage your GPT-5 performance, and most people don't even realize they're making it. The instruction following trap. This next insight might be the most important thing in this entire video, because it's about a mistake that can actually make GPT-5 perform worse than earlier models, and most people have no idea it's happening. GPT-5 follows instructions with what OpenAI calls surgical precision. That sounds great, right? 
But here's the problem. If your prompt contains contradictory instructions, GPT-5 will spend valuable reasoning tokens trying to reconcile those contradictions instead of focusing on your actual task. Let me show you a real example. Watch what happens with this prompt. Write professional emails. Always be brief and concise. Also, provide detailed explanations for every recommendation you make. GPT-5 gets stuck in a loop. It tries to be brief while also being detailed, wasting tokens on this impossible contradiction. The result? Slower performance and confused outputs. Here's the fix. Write professional emails. Be brief in your greeting and closing, but provide detailed explanations when making recommendations. Now GPT-5 knows exactly when to be brief and when to be detailed. Here's the solution that professional AI teams use. They conduct thorough prompt audits before deploying with GPT-5. They specifically look for conflicting instructions, ambiguous requirements, and unclear hierarchies. Always test your prompts with OpenAI's Prompt Optimizer tool to identify these contradictions before they impact your results. But wait until you see this next section, because it's about getting maximum performance when you need speed over everything else. Minimal reasoning, maximum speed. Here's something that changes everything for time-sensitive applications. GPT-5 introduces minimal reasoning effort for the first time. This is the fastest option that still gives you the benefits of the reasoning model paradigm. Think of it like this. Sometimes you need GPT-5 to think deeply about a complex problem, but other times you need quick, reliable responses for routine tasks. Minimal reasoning effort is designed for those scenarios where speed matters more than exhaustive analysis. But here's where it gets interesting. Minimal reasoning requires different prompting techniques. Watch this comparison. Bad minimal reasoning prompt. Help me organize my emails. Result. GPT-5 asks clarifying questions, gets confused about priorities, gives incomplete results. Good minimal reasoning prompt. You are an agent. Organize my emails by 1. Sort by priority, urgent, normal, low, 2. Create folders for each project, 3. Archive emails older than 30 days. Confirm completion of each step before moving to the next. Result. GPT-5 immediately starts organizing, reports progress at each step, and completes the full task efficiently. The reason this works is that minimal reasoning gives the model fewer internal tokens for planning, so you need to provide that structure explicitly in your prompt. This brings us to something that most people completely overlook, but it can make the difference between amateur and professional results. Advanced formatting and markdown control. Here's something that even experienced users often miss. GPT-5 doesn't format its responses in Markdown by default, unlike what many people expect. This is actually by design to maintain compatibility with applications that don't support Markdown rendering. But here's the thing. If you want properly formatted responses, you need to explicitly request them. The most effective approach is to include instructions like use Markdown only where semantically correct, such as inline code, code fences, lists, and tables. When using Markdown, Use backticks to format file, directory, function, and class names. Now here's a pro tip that comes directly from the guide. If you're having long conversations, markdown formatting instructions can degrade over time. The solution is to append a brief markdown reminder every three to five user messages to maintain consistency. But there's something even more powerful hidden in this section, and it's about using GPT-5 to improve itself. Metaprompting using GPT-5 to optimize GPT-5. This final technique might be the most powerful of all, and it's something that early testers discovered almost by accident. You can use GPT-5 as a metaprompter for itself, essentially having the model help you optimize your own prompts for better performance. Here's the step-by-step -step process with a real example. Step one, start with your current prompt. Write a marketing email for our new product. Step two, Ask GPT-5 to optimize it. Analyze this prompt and suggest specific improvements. Write a marketing email for our new product. What phrases should I add or delete to get more consistent, high-quality results? Step 3. GPT-5 suggests improvements. Add target audience, tone specification, key benefits to highlight, call-to-action requirements, and length parameters. Step 4. Your optimized prompt. 
Write a professional marketing email for busy executives about our project management software. Highlight time-saving benefits. Include social proof. End with a clear demo request CTA. Keep under 150 words. What makes this so effective is that GPT-5 understands its own training and can identify exactly what language patterns will trigger the behaviors you're looking for. It's like having the model's creator help you write better prompts. Several production teams are already using this approach, and they're seeing significant improvements in their prompt performance. The response is API, your secret weapon. Here's a hidden feature that improves results by 4% instantly. The response is API. With regular chat completions, GPT-5 rebuilds its understanding from scratch every time it uses a tool. It's like re-explaining your entire project after every coffee break. The Responses API lets GPT-5 remember its previous reasoning. OpenAI's testing showed performance jumping from 73.9% to 78.2% on complex tasks just by switching APIs. The bonus? You pay less because GPT-5 doesn't waste tokens reconstructing context. Better results, lower costs, zero prompt changes needed. Professional coding techniques. Lessons from Cursor. The team at Cursor spent months optimizing GPT-5 for real coding tasks, and they discovered two game-changing techniques. First, they solved GPT-5's verbosity problem. Instead of getting flooded with explanations, they set verbosity to low globally, but prompted for detailed explanations only when writing code. Result, clean status updates plus comprehensive code comments. Second, they stopped GPT-5 from asking unnecessary clarification questions by giving it environmental context, you're working in an IDE with undo slash reject features. User prefers TypeScript. Make reasonable assumptions and proceed. The user can always undo if needed. This simple context made GPT-5 dramatically more proactive. The key principle, give GPT-5 context about its environment and available tools, not just the task itself. Putting it all together, your GPT-5 mastery framework. So here's what we've covered and how it all connects into a complete system for GPT-5 mastery. We started with understanding GPT-5's shift to autonomous task execution, then learned how to control its agentic behavior with tool call budgets and environmental context. We discovered the Hidden Responses API that improves performance by 4% while reducing costs. We explored Cursor's professional techniques for verbosity control and environmental context. We learned about the new verbosity parameter for precise output control and how to avoid contradictory instructions that waste reasoning tokens. We covered minimal reasoning for speed-critical tasks and the meta-prompting technique for continuous improvement. Here's your action plan. Start by auditing your existing prompts for contradictions, then switch to the Responses API for multi-step tasks. Set global verbosity to low, but override for specific contexts. Give GPT-5 environmental context to boost autonomy and use the meta-prompting technique to optimize underperforming prompts. The key insight that ties everything together is this. GPT-5 works best when you give it broad objectives, clear environmental context, and contradiction-free instructions. It's designed to be an autonomous partner that can execute complex workflows from start to finish. Remember, this is just the beginning. GPT-5 represents a fundamental shift in how we interact with AI. And the techniques we've covered today will only become more important as these systems continue to evolve. What's your experience with GPT-5 so far? Are there specific use cases where you're seeing the biggest improvements? Let me know in the comments below. And if this video helped you understand GPT-5 better, make sure to subscribe for more deep dives into the latest AI developments. I've got some exciting content planned for next week that builds on everything we've covered today.